Hello and welcome to Pickles Garage. Today we're going to be working on the BMW here. We're going to be replacing this oil filter housing. You'll notice that a lot of the uh, connection points have some oil around it. Oil leaks out of here too. You have to extremely over tighten this cap for it to even sort of seal. But basically oil, when it's running, you can see it literally dripping out. Uh, so naturally that's not good one because you're losing oil You don't have good pressure and oil is going all over your engine bay So we're gonna go ahead and replace this This is one of those things that the dealership will try and charge you well over a thousand dollars for but it's really not too bad You just have to Know kind of have a, a general idea of what you're doing and, and we'll kind of get there together So the part itself is only about $170. You can find them on Rock Auto. There's only one option, but I'll show you which one I got. So this is what I have, the Aero Parts Oil Filter Housing. It comes with basically everything that you need. It'll have some gaskets. You'll have your new housing itself, right? And then you'll get a new cap. And then you'll have all your gaskets so this should be everything that you need like I said there was only one when I looked maybe there'll be more options if you look but uh, really just the one but this should work just fine so we're gonna start with disassembly first and let's go ahead and start so this is towards the top which is great um, because I'm gonna try and lose as little fluid as possible. This has been leaking, like I mentioned, so we might be pretty low on it in general. But you also have this tube connecting into it as well for radiator fluid, so I'm going to, you could probably start attacking it without removing anything else, but I'm going to actually remove the air box here just so that I can try and pull this up once I remove it. And again, just try and lose as little fluid as possible and uh, go from there. I have this lifted off the ground. I'm hoping that also helps kind of shift everything to the back as well as give me room for a bucket down below. But like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. These are, I believe, yep, 10 millimeter, so one, two, and then this is just friction held. So let me remove that real quick and then we'll get back to this. And then once you remove those two, just a quick screwdriver there for that, and then that will pop on out for your mass airflow sensor. Basically, you just have to push that middle tab a little bit to the side, and then it'll pop away, and then you can go ahead and pull this off. So now we have plenty of room to access this oil filter housing. So you'll notice that these are actually six-pointed uh, bolts here. You can get the specific sort of you know, socket for those. I have found it's not really that hard to get them off with just your run of the mill 5 16 uh, 12 point. And so they're not on extremely tight. And so it, it really shouldn't be that big of an issue. But like I said, if you're, if you're concerned about stripping them or something, you can buy the specialty bolt or the specialty socket rather, but a lot of these car companies, they love to make you buy special tools. So you'll notice that there's three. So there's this long one. Order will be important, but it'll be somewhat obvious. There's also this lower one here um, that I should be able to get to with what I have. Let me change up my setup. There's also a, a further one back in here. That one's gonna be a little bit, a little bit different. Um, but just visualizing what you have to do so far, you'll notice that there's a connection point here. You'll notice the, the hose I mentioned earlier, and then the three bolts. So we're just working our way through those. Uh, let me see if I can get a decent angle on this lower one, and then we'll resume. And then if you're using metric, it's also very comparable to the size 8. So you'll notice that we already have coolant starting to come out. So this is when you're going to want to have your bucket handy. There is that bottom plastic plate underneath these, that skid plate. You can go ahead and remove that if you want to try and catch it in a different way, but just getting a bucket generally where it's going to be flooding out is going to help you out. So, like I said, size 8, 5 16 whatever works, but I'm going to go make sure that's being collected in my bucket, and then we'll resume. So I do want to get the filter out, and as I mentioned, mine is actually way over tightened because that was the only way that it was possibly having a seal. So you shouldn't have to do this. You should be able to do it in different parts. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and get this removed here. So I just have this tool. Usually you would use this for, oh. <laughs> usually you'd use that for um, removing like your standard sort of filters, but it works on the cap as well. And then it should be hand loosened. So realistically, this should have been hand loosened to begin with, but because mine had to be over tightened, you gotta use that tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this apart so that way I can get it set up for my new one. Now, you can do it in the extremely proper way and drain all of your fluids and, and do this while you're changing your oil and while you're changing your coolant. I'm doing it a little bit more sloppy just because I'm trying to fix a series of issues with this thing and I just wanna get it all set up before I do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside now. So now I've removed the filter. I did replace the cap just so everything's not sloshing around. I do wanna show you real quick with these. So honestly, it's not a difficult removal compared to most other vehicles. A lot of other vehicles, what they'll have is very similar to what I showed you initially where it's just like a screw and then you're loosening it up. These have these retaining clips that you saw me just use a screwdriver just to, to push it wide open. The thing is, this is plastic and it over time breaks fairly easily. So you don't wanna be, you know, torquing too hard on it. I have had issues where this retaining clip will pop off. It's not the end of the world, but it does kind of defeat the purpose. So all you have to do is move it back enough and then this should be able to slide. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back. I'm probably gonna end up hitting the camera again, so I'll probably pause, but you'll notice I, I just loosened this one. I left it on, that way there's still some sort of tension to it. Again, realistically, I think you can remove a lot of these things um, once these are removed, but sometimes it's just helpful just to have that resistance. So we're gonna go ahead and knock this out and then we're gonna go back to the top and I'll show you another removal. Okay, so using a tool similar to this, you can kind of walk it back a little bit, but again, because this is plastic, just make sure if you move on this side, then you need to try and find a way to move on this side. And so it's walking back a little bit more evenly. Eventually it'll get to a point where you can just kind of pull it. Naturally some coolant will flow out, but I have it lifted so that way I don't lose much more. So as mentioned, we have one removed. This one's loose. I think realistically you could try and attack this one. Maybe if you took off this plastic cover, um, that way you don't have to worry about having issues getting a good grip on it because the new one will not have uh, this connection piece. You need to remove this sensor, right? And so what we can do is we can go ahead and lift this up very similar to how this tab was removed. Lift it up and we'll be able to walk that back as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and probably put this in a vise and undo this just so I have a little bit more room. But that is completely a judgment call. If you want to remove this, it's not so hard. It's just a couple different points like this and this plastic cover will come off. But like I said, we're gonna go ahead and lift this clip, push this back, and then I'm gonna finish removing this bolt. And then we're gonna go for the one that's a little bit more complicated right back there that you can see. And there we go. So what I found was most convenient is I have a ratcheting wrench and I just had it kind of at this angle like that. And then you get about that much of a turn on it. And because it ratchets, once it gets looser, obviously you kind of untighten and retighten. And so you have to sort of stick your hand right through here and hold it with kind of like a middle finger, right? They made the bolt far too long, mostly because they hate us, um, but it is doable in that way. I think maybe you might be able to get one of those ratchets that like spins rather than ratchets, but we'll see. I'm gonna play around with a couple different techniques just because the angle here isn't really ideal for getting a ratchet in, so that's why I went with the, the ratcheting wrench. Um, I don't think you can come up through the bottom. So unfortunately, that's probably the best way to do it without taking off your entire intake here, or different components. So we're gonna go ahead and um, clean up this area and then we'll start lining up the gasket for the new one. 
So I removed it from the old one, easy enough. Just have it pinched in a vise here, and we're gonna go ahead and put the new one in. But I'm gonna grab this gasket first and go ahead and put it on this ring. This is a size 24. I found it easiest to have a deep socket. You just have to break it loose. It shouldn't be on too tight and then unthread the rest of the way with your hands. But we'll go ahead and put the new one on now. Just like that. And we'll thread this right back in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the filter and get this mostly tightened just so everything is pretty much ready to go and we just have to pop the bolts on. So now we're gonna line it up and just make sure that this gasket is pressed in and lined up properly. Just go around it maybe twice. You definitely don't want this to be the reason that you have a leak. So we're gonna go ahead and line this up and start re-threading the bolts. Okay, so wrapping up here, just replacing the bolts here. I actually was able to go from this direction down through here towards this third bolt. I had to use a quarter drive, just a little extension, bit of an elbow here, uh, size eight, remember. And I was able to ratchet in a little bit more smoothly. So I would do that for the, the rear one. When you're putting this one back in, just make sure the part with the tab is as close to up as possible because that's where your retaining clip is gonna go back on. And so that is about it. Don't forget to replace your retaining clip and make sure this is pushed all the way forward for your hose. Make sure you return your filter. And then we're just gonna go ahead and put our new cap on and we're good to go. So thank you very much for watching. See you on the next one.